the holiday shopping season, a peak time for retailers around the world. But luxury stores have seen a slowdown in sales over the past couple of years. High-end shoppers haven't been spending as much. In London, it's especially noticeable since the U.K. stopped operating its tax-free shopping perk for tourists. Jun Wei Sub reports. Christmas lights are sparkling on London's famed Regent and Bond Streets, the heart of festive shopping for both locals and tourists alike. But ever since the COVID-19 pandemic, the number of tourists eyeing the shops has been going down. The travel lockdowns are over, but the UK's pause on tax-free shopping for tourists has not restarted. It ended in 2020 as part of Brexit. There's that pent-up demand from the post-pandemic where people are wanting to experience London in the way they did. But what we're seeing is, although they're enjoying it, they're not enjoying it for as long or spending as much as they did, and particularly when it comes to shopping. CEBR, a consultancy, estimates that the loss of tax-free shopping is costing the UK economy more than $13 billion each year. No wonder a slew of Britain's largest luxury brands and retailers are lobbying for its return. We've heard from some brands that they're prioritising Paris for investment in their stores, or even new openings of brands that don't exist in London are prioritising Paris because they're seeing the sales and the people there, you know, shopping. Data from international tax refund company Global Blue shows that travellers from the US, China and Gulf countries, all keen to shop, are flocking to Paris and Milan instead. Tax breaks there mean an automatic 20% discount. Some Chinese shoppers on the duty-free shopping haven of China's Hainan Island say the lure of London is fading. When we went shopping at Harrods in the UK, the prices were a lot cheaper than those in China, and you could claim a tax refund too. But the whole tax refund process is rather complicated, unlike duty-free shopping in Sanya. Whatever we buy here is already tax-free. While there are still plenty of reasons to visit Britain, businesses will want to ensure there are also reasons for tourists to spend big. Junwei Sam, CGTN. For all things tax and duty-free, let's bring in Yan Leong, professor of economics at Willamette University. Welcome back to the show. Uh, break it down, the difference between tax-free shopping and duty-free shopping, because I think a lot of people just kind of mix them together, but they're very different, aren't they? Yeah, good to talk to you, Mike. So yeah, there are some nuances uh, between the two different uh, types of shopping. The duty-free, usually what we mean by duty is the customs duty, and of course there's also exercise duty. But I think in this context, it's, it means that um, you know consumers don't need to pay the customs duty. So when they buy imports or exports, um, they're exempt from the kinds of tariffs that you typically need to pay. And tax-free basically means you're not paying any taxes, not value-added tax, or um, sales tax, like you know, in the states where I live, Oregon, we don't have any sales tax. So um, you know that that's the price that you pay for the goods without uh, all these other taxes. But usually, when you have those duty-free shops um, in the airport, international airports, or uh, uh, the train station or ports, um, these duty-free shops also are tax-free. So that, I think you know, for typical consumers, when you buy in those duty-free shops, basically you mean means that you don't need to pay any taxes. Um, but you do, for example, uh, in the UK scenario, you have to first pay the value-added tax, but then you can get a refund. Yeah, it's so interesting, though. You, you you don't really think about this, and it has an incentive to bring people in uh, to do a lot of shopping. But obviously, it is important um, when you look at what's happened in the UK. I mean, they get rid of it in 2020, and, and it's been a sizable change. Can you talk to us about how this can impact the economies of countries? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you're, to you're totally right. It doesn't seem to be a big deal. But as a matter of fact, I think based on the CEBR, uh, the, the research firm that um, the reporter mentioned, uh, based on their calculation, uh, if the you know value-added tax refund is implemented, this will save about 4% of the cost for a visit to UK. And what that means is it's going to bring in more tourists. And it also means it will uh, promote even more tourist spending by even the existing and the, and the uh, new sort of uh, uh, visitors. So altogether, this will create about 3.9 billion pound uh, an increase in the consumer uh, uh, tourist spending in 2023. 
Now, with that spending, um, there's also something we call um, in economics the spending multiplier effect, meaning that you know if you were a tourist, you go in the restaurants, you get a taxi, you know you stay in the hotel. These also generate jobs and income, and those income gets spent. So you can see there are multiple rounds of job and income creations, and altogether this could increase the GDP of the UK by 10.7 billion pound in 2023. So it's not a trivial matter um, in that sense, and that. Would also help to boost the government's uh, the uh, tax revenues. Um, so for every one dollar, uh, sorry, one pound of the value-added tax refund, the government can receive one point uh, five pound of uh, tax revenues. So it actually pays for itself. We heard in that story, though, uh, uh, someone shopping in Hainan saying that you know it's complicated, and and that's been my experience with the value-added tax too. Is that you know it. You, you save all your receipts, you have to fill out documents sometimes at the airport. It can be a little bit cumbersome. Um, and, 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 and I guess that's the distinction, too, when you think about duty-free. I mean, you buy your items and that's that. You don't have to really think about it. Right, exactly. When you have this refund process, it could be cumbersome. And like you said, sometimes you're rushing the airport and then there's a long queue that you have to fill the forms. And so um, the reporter mentioned this uh, Hainan in the uh, uh, China's island. There's the Haiko International Duty Free uh, Shopping Mall, which is the largest standalone you know, duty free shops. And so um, they have streamlined the process. So basically, you don't need to um, have this refund process. The price that you pay simply do not have the taxes in it. And so I think that really helped consumers to navigate through um, this process of buying duty free. And that's why, you know, they have seen really rising revenues uh, last year and uh, estimated to grow this year as well. You know, the total duty free uh, retail market is huge. It's lucrative. It's about thirty nine uh, billion dollars in 2022. And it's expected to grow to 42 billion uh, this, 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 this year. So I think countries would, you know, try to take advantage of this market, not to mention, you know, as we mentioned, earlier, this could help to boost tourism and help to generate uh, several rounds of income generations. Yeah, you were talking about this, and, and, and maybe you can dig just a little bit deeper, uh, the economic contribution of the tourism sector in general. I mean, when you think of Paris versus London, somebody decides, well, I'm going to go to Paris rather than go to London. I'm going to save a little bit more on the shopping spree. As you said, that translates into taxis and hotels and all the rest, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just tourism alone, it's a uh, $7.7 .7 trillion industry uh, uh, last year, and that is, you know, 7.6 billion, 7.6% uh, uh, of the global GDP. That um, also creates multiple, you know, income effects. So it's very important for, for countries, especially, you know, some of the smaller countries that really heavily rely on tourism. Um, I think it's really uh, a very important revenue sources for them. Uh, you know, tourism was hard hit during pandemic. So I think now when markets reopen, when borders reopen, um, so we'll, we're likely to see the, the improvement in the sector. Um, but again, I think smart policies and, you know, all these efforts of building, you know, not just duty free shops, but many other facilities to facilitate the kinds of global traveling, I think will be really wise for um, every country's government. Our thanks to Yan Leong, professor of economics at Willamette University. Uh, have yourself a great weekend. Maybe go out and do some shopping. I mean, it's, uh, you don't have to pay the sales tax. It's good.